Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to Abracadabra. What is the sinister world of magic? So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. The brothers asked me to talk about Alistair Crowley, a man who was born in the latter part of the 19th century. And when you hear his story, I want you to relate it to what you've heard about the magicians, because this is verified, accepted evidence. This is something that is not superstition, it's not hearsay, it's not something all oh, those Saudis made it up or we saw it on a video somewhere. This is something that has clear evidences and proofs. His books are available uh, for reading, his works are still there, his opinions have lived on. Listen to who this person was and listen to how he became a magician and what he did. It is a story full of disbelief and the most filthy and the abhorrent acts by which he sought nearness to the shaitan. And beware, he had a different name for it. He used to call some of his things magic with a K instead of a C or CK at the end. Doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it miracles. You can call it healing. You can call it anything you like. If it involves disbelief, it is disbelief. Call a spade a spade. In his early life, he was born a Christian. And he lived a life of disobedience, of disobeying his parents. He was kicked out of school. And he decided to travel the world in, 19, or in 1896 in Sweden. He had his first experience with the jinn, seeking help from the jinn. How did this person achieve this? How did this man achieve this nearness to the jinn? He said this happened as a result of his first experience of homosexuality. He committed this filthy, horrible act and he said, when I did so, it opened the world of the jinn to me slightly. It gave me a bit of a, this is his own statements, his own writing, that it opened the door a little bit to the occult and he said, I started, you know, to, 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 to enter into this kind of uh, mysticism. He began to read many, many books on mysticism and the occult, books by magicians, books on different forms of magic. He studied at Cambridge where he was known for his uh, lack of modesty, where he was known for having many relations with both men and women, where he was known for coming close to the shaitan, where he was known for practicing with the occult. He was not known for having normal relations with women. He would do the most filthy and foul and abhorrent, abhorrent, disgusting things in his relations with women in order to come close to the shaitan. He left the University of Cambridge to pursue his career in mysticism. He traveled to Egypt, he traveled to China, he traveled to India, to France, to the United States and to Mexico to learn magic. He had many, many girls and mistresses that he would sleep with from time to time, one here, one there, one and the other. When he was in Egypt in 1904, his wife said to him, she kept having visions and she said, they are waiting for you. They are waiting for you in Egypt. He said, who is waiting for me? She said, she wouldn't reply. She said, they are waiting for you that they are waiting for you. In the same year, he performed a ritual to seek the help of the Egyptian god Thoth or Thoth in a magical rite. In other words, he performed an act of shirk, he performed an act of filth, he performed an act to make himself close and he called upon the Egyptian god, help me, come to me. And when the Egyptian god, he called upon him, his wife told him that she had had another vision. And that they were the Egyptian god, I think it's Horus or Horus, and that he was going to be a messenger of this Egyptian god on the earth. He went to an exhibition in Egypt of this so-called god and he said he was amazed when the number of the exhibition was 666. He said this is the number of the devil and from then on he dedicated himself to the service of the shaitan. 
This is all fact. This is all stuff that has been written either by him or by recognized biographers of him. He said he began at that time to hear voices that commanded him, gods that would come to him, messengers that would come to him and tell him that he was a messenger of the gods and he was sent to call the people to worship the devil. He practiced Buddhism. He practiced Hinduism. He practiced the worship of the devil and he dedicated his life to performing magic. He founded many organizations dedicated to magic and he progressed through the ranks practicing magic. He was the one who invented the word that is the title of this topic today and I've looked into the meaning of this word and there is something that is very common with magicians and this thing is called um, I believe it's called gematria or something similar and basically what it is is that every letter has a numerical value and these values add to something and they mean some kind of call to shaitan to help you and this word when we break it down has many suggested meanings one of the suggested meanings of this word that is the title of the lesson is I will create as I speak. And he attributing himself the attribute of creation besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the meanings, said meanings of this word, it is that he's calling upon the great gods of Egypt to help and to aid him or the jinn or many, many other uh, things. And if you look on his Wikipedia article, you see something like 10 or 12 different and interpretations for this word all of them are evil all of them are calling upon the shaitan his basic religion that he founded is based upon two principles do what thou wilt do whatever you want shahwa desire do whatever you want there is nothing haram there is nothing too filthy nothing too foul he said when he was having all of these relations i used to hold back from these relations with men and these relations with women and these filthy things that he was doing and he said then i realized that we should do whatever we want that there are no limits that there is nothing that is too evil to do and he would do it as much as he want his second theme of his religion is uh, his use of uh, sexual ideas and relations to call upon the shaitan. He would use the energies and passions at these times upon to focus his energy to call the shaitan. So he would engage in illicit relations with men and women and during this time he would be calling upon the shaitan and he said when I did this more and more and more the shaitan would come to me and I realized this is how we focus our effort. Look at the state of this person. He said he would switch views and personalities at will. He would suddenly change his opinion. The halal would become haram and the haram would become halal. This is the, you know, this is what this person, the kind of person that this person was. He died in 1947 and the people after him continued his legacy of kufr and shirk. He is considered to be one of the foremost magicians of the Western world and one of the most famous magicians of the Western world. He, his books are considered to be uh, used by people in the fields of magic, occultism, paganism, witchcraft. He was even considered by one newspaper to be from the most influential people in Britain. He influenced a person who later went on to work with Ron Hubbard, the founder of the false cult of Scientology. He heavily influenced mu musicians, many musicians, including the Beatles and including Ozzy Osbourne and others, used his influence in their music. And this shows you the reality of what music really is. Many movie makers, many movies and cinematic things were made based upon his ideas and his, his paganism and the things that he taught. More than anything, he emphasized desire. He emphasized relations outside of marriage. He emphasized not having any limit to what you do. And this is unfortunately part of the, you know, the liberation of this society, the loss of moral, the loss of uh, values, the loss of everything that this society had that was good. Much of it is down to people like Alistair Crowley and, and the people that he influenced. So when you hear his story, I was quite impressed and quite amazed that when I heard his story and I read it in detail, I read his biography, I found that actually I wasn't really all that surprised. In reality, what he was doing was exactly the same as many magicians that I have heard of, magicians that I have seen, magicians that I have talked to, all of them do the same thing. They disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most evil, evil ways. They commit the most horrible acts, the most horrible crimes, 
and they do sort of seek help from the shaitan but alhamdulillah they are weak and they are seeking help from the shaitan whose plot is weak and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for us to protect us against them and against their plots and inshallah some of what I mentioned in my last uh, talk would benefit the brothers inshallah in that in terms of um, in terms of what you can do to protect yourself against these people so we talked you know a little bit about these things about the reality of magic about what it is about the magician and who he really is about what a magician i think this video is going to be in two parts i'm curious to ask you guys how does one exactly lose their way from um say in this case it was christianity to being a magician how is it because we have too much free uh, free time is it because we have too much freedom or is it because we're so bored that now we become curious as to okay if i slap this person is is god going to punish me what i mean is we're so curious that we go out there and do bad things and we expect it to be okay another thing is i actually never knew what it actually stood for this is the first time someone is actually defining it and you really have to take your time to actually understand certain things because this is a video i'm reacting i don't have time i don't have 30 minutes to say okay let me think about it formulate something to to say i have to say it there and there as i think it but a good um person that actually wants to learn not a good person but a person that wants to learn will actually after this go out there and research or pause the video and actually research how all this works out otherwise i feel like we're ignorant sometimes how many times do we find ourselves using the words say abracadabra because we heard it in um movies like harry potter or maybe read it in a book and all those things but we don't know what it actually means to us it may mean nothing but they that know something about it know what it means know what it means when they say it. otherwise we have to be careful we have to be very very careful anyway let me not say much let me get back to the video